Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Bad Monkey Gaming versus Shrek is Love, game number two. Going to be coming at you. Cards got of our pro league, of course. Week number one, getting things kicked off here. And again, BMG, if you happen to be just tuning in, a quick 15-minute victory over one of the newcomers here to the pro league. Uh, but uh, we'll, okay, we'll see what Shrek is Love has up their sleeve. Perhaps a little bit something different here. Changing up the draft maybe a little bit. See what they can do. Uh, once again, I'm joined by Mini Maggot as my co-caster. Welcome back. Hello, hello. Already moving along here in this draft. Uh, going pretty pretty quick start. They they insta picked that Magnus right away first pick. Again, he's he got a lot of recognition the last cycle. I, I don't know the, the final, final stats. I would have to double check on those from the cycle one. But uh, he was, I believe, one of the top three most played heroes uh, from cycle one of this uh uh, Karnja Kaladavar, and, and again, he kind of just, before that, he wasn't really heard of too much, at least a whole lot of the competitive scenes, so it's kind of like he rose in the Karnja Kaladavar, and he's, he's still staying strong. Mm, yeah, it, so. he's, he's so versatile, and like, just one of those cookie-cutter builds, like, it's just so, I don't know, he's like, the hero is just perfect, and everything he does, like, a good initiator, you know, he's got an escape mechanism, and he's just like an overall good hero, and that's why we sort of see him picked up here, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in Hon. Indeed, indeed. So Bubble's going to be that final pick coming out right here. But overall, they go with Magnus, Engineer, Torture. A lot of stun potential here on the Legion side. A lot of diversity. Still not exactly sure, maybe, where they're going to be landing up. As far as the Hellborn team, you got Empath, Swift Blade, and Bubbles uh, are their picks over there. The bands, by the way, Pharaoh, Rhapsody, Drunken Master, Chrono. So uh, you see uh, Puppet Master actually not touched, and he still has not been picked up by other team. Yeah, I mean, we, we see Puppet, like, it was the same in the last game, actually, but, like, Puppet is sort of somewhat fallen off. Like, he's still a good hero, but, like, uh, we get to see him banned there, but, like, he's, you know, kind of countered by, like, early push that we saw in the first game, and he's quite easily locked down with, like, you know, Chrono, Salty, or, you know, whatever big ult is. Um, and also, when, like, the enemy team gets strong and head, he does a lot of magical damage, obviously, coming up with his Voodoo Puppet and his um, lockdown with Puppet Show and Puppet is Hold, and shrunken and Head almost sort of nullifies him to, a, to an extent. Like, he's still a good hero, but obviously not as good as... Um, once previously fought, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, you know, <laughs> as I'm as I was looking at the stats here to, to again finish off. Big shout out to Quincy. This guy just he, he does the stats right, and, and it's always fun looking at this. And again, it really helps you get an idea of what's going on. Um, as far as that's concerned, they have Swiftblade over here on BMG side now. Uh, Swiftblade actually is kind of an interesting stat that Quincy put together in terms of. Over uh, the the top five best heroes that were underused in terms of they had a high win percentage, but they were used very very little. Swiftblade actually leads the way with that. He actually had a 64 percent win percentage, but he was only used in 12 percent in games. The highest win percentage though on a player was actually with Fuzi. He won six out of their seven games with Swiftblade. So um, you know again they are the top team. They have the most wins. So you take that consideration too, but. Yeah, but point being that uh, they, they love to run Swift Blade, and it works out very well for them uh, in the end. Yeah, and whenever I see BMG normally run the Swift Blade, they normally run like an aggressive tri lane, and, and this sort of sort of suggests that they're going to do it because they picked up the bubbles here, which is like a perfect hero. Um, not only because he's a good, um, you know, when he gets level six, he can rotate in that tri lane and be like a big impact, but he can be sort of sat mid and. If if he's going against like a dual lane or a 1v1 hero, he's going to be going um, up against it and like do very, very well. Revenant pickup. Now, that is a hero I'm really looking forward to. Like My team actually sort of, sort of hmm. experimented with it, uh, and I'd really like to see how BMG play it. Uh, we actually played it as a suicide, so I don't know how... They might be using it as like, support, maybe, which might be better than a suicide, but I'm really looking forward to how BMG play this Revenant, actually. Yeah. Revenant, I, I've, always, I've always loved this hero. I really have. I, I've always been a huge fan of this hero ever since he first came out. I, I think his potential has perhaps been underused in the end. I mean, you, you just think of the skill set of this hero, man. I mean, the mobility that he has, both not for only for him, but a team entity even more as the game progresses. I mean, we people talk about smoke inks all the time, uh, yeah. from Dota. Yeah. He basically has a smoke ink and it built into a skill set at the mid to later range level. So yeah. it seems like that would be attractive, but apparently not as much. Yeah, like the only problem with like the hero why we didn't see up earlier is he doesn't obviously have a set lockdown stun. He just has a lot of damage, and with with um, you know supports like you always pick the support for like you know the lockdown. Obviously, Revenant doesn't offer that, but I'd like to see how BMG play actually here. It should be very interesting, um, and like especially after I don't know it's not recent, but you know somewhat recent where he could level it up his ult at level four and you know level four, eight, and twelve, I think. Yeah. Um, it's actually a really, really big influence. Like, it's not, you wouldn't pick up the ulti at level 4, but you'd pick up at like level 8, 
Um, so like you pick up at level seven and level eight to get you know the level two ulti, um, and and level eight and level nine is where his gank potential it goes through the roof. Like you said about the smoke gank, and it honestly is similar effect, if not even better. So yeah. I'd really like to see. It. And like BMG is like a hero or a team that always always is early aggression and you know roaming. And this sort of style of hero is almost perfect for their play style. It feels like. Yeah. Yeah, again, yeah, the fact that it's being played by VMG, that's true, too. It's, uh, that kind of took me a second to even realize. You would think maybe yeah. it would be an or, uh, ogre over here. I, I think orange when I see that tag. But uh, <laughs> that is not orange eSports. Not anymore. Uh, Bomb and ear being right-clicked here. You, you, can, you can tell maybe BMG trying to have a little bit of fun with this in terms of a couple of different But at the same time, I, I say fun lightly because, I mean, obviously, again, it's a game you're having fun. But uh, experimenting when you are facing yep. against, you know, this isn't your sync esports matchup or your reason matchup. I mean, this is a team that's less experienced. So this is your time now if you are BMG to maybe try heroes that you normally wouldn't against those teams in a tournament Thunder. environment. They go with Thunderbringer. I yeah, mean, I'll we've seen Lim play this before, and he's dominated. Yeah. And I was going to say, actually, like Bombardier is actually quite similar to a Thunderbringer because, you know, obviously they're both good laners, and particularly it's the ultimates have that global potential, and that's in a tri lane is really, really important. We saw, uh, you know, Limp and DMG pick up Thunderbringer last time, and the reason why they picked it up almost um, is because of the impact it had on the tri lane. That ultimate, like global, is such a big help in the yeah. tri lanes because it, it can almost win the tri lane for you. Um, so that's why I think Bombardier would be a good pick. But Thunderbringer, yes, this hero is, like, what I like to see. <laughs> damage, damage, damage. <laughs> the last time we saw this hero, it was in that trial match. I mean, I, I forget. It, it was during the, the, the cycle one. I, I don't remember the exact game you know, off the top of my head, obviously. but They, they were playing Rexars in. Was it? Okay. Yeah, they, they were playing Rexars. I can't remember what sort of cycle. You know, Good memory week, there. Whatever. But they were playing Rex, as a member, and it, it was a real, real impact on the, the tri lane. The BMG run actually a Swift Play tri lane against Rex, as who ran like a Ravenor tri lane. And like, obviously, Swift Play tri lane was strong, but I think it was the, sort of the Thunderbringer that really was like the, the X factor to winning that tri lane because of his uh, ultimate, which is yeah. the Lightnings. You know, I may actually be able to pull that out. Let me pull my stats here real quickly to double check on that, but. Um... You're going to prove me wrong now, aren't you? But... No, no, I'm, I'm just, uh, just to absolutely make sure. I mean, I would be I curious. Think, like... I'm... Pretty sure, I'm about like ninety percent sure, but you're probably gonna like prove me wrong now. But like, I think yeah. that was, I'm pretty sure that was the case. Though. Let's see, this is gonna a second here. Obviously, we have a pause here to start things off. So looks like one of the players just DCing, but also uh, have you been watching a bit any of the World Cup breaking? Oh, of Don't course, American. Oh, yeah. I love the World Cup. <laughs> No, yeah, I, I definitely, I, 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 I sincerely mean that. I love watching the World Cup. I mean, I don't watch a whole lot of, of football. As everyone else calls it, as we call it soccer, um, but I I do watch the World Cup and I do care for it and I do care to watch it. So, yes. And I've got a good win over Ghana. Like, yeah. On Monday, yeah. two one. Yeah, uh, two to one. It, I mean, and now we got Portugal next, and they're they're oh. they're down a couple men. So, I think yeah, our chances are actually though. decent. I think you definitely have a good chance, but I mean, depends if Cristiano Ronaldo shows up, really, doesn't it? Really, but. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 an all right player. I've heard. <laughs> England yeah. are playing Uruguay today in about a couple of hours. So. Yeah, yeah, they they lost their first match, right? Oh, yeah, just, just, just to remind you, they, they lost their <laughs> first match. That reminds me. That but happened. Who did they lose to? Italy. Two one. That, oh, okay, yeah, that's, oh, man, that's, that's respectable. Yeah, but, uh, but we should have. How about Spain though? That that's a story, oh, man. Yeah. That's the like, story. Oh, insane, man! Insane. Like, did you watch the Netherlands? Oh, I my did. Goodness. Yeah, I did. Insane. Whew, yeah, that got out of hand quickly. That was like humiliation, like <laughs> to put it lightly. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, two nothing, they lost to Chile, and it's like, well, we're done. Oh. So much yeah. for being the returning champions. Yeah, and, and that's like that's what it's like. Like if you're, you know, obviously expected to win or at least do really, really well, like you know, the pressure's definitely on. Like yeah. in, in terms of any sport, really, isn't it? So, um, Indeed, including Heroes of New Earth. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> what I was trying to link it to. Anyway, of course. But. Um, it all goes back to Han. I, I do I do have that stat, by the way. Thunderbringer was actually played twice last season. Once by Olympus, we're talking about. He was also played by Imbo Boy in a match. Uh, I don't oh, know the opponent, actually. but Anyways, uh, yeah, it was played by Limp, though. He went 9-1-9. and nine. He went 480 goal per minute. Uh, he basically dominated. And it was only a 17-minute match. So, <laughs> ended very quickly. Because of the Thunderbringer. Exactly. <laughs> Simply. <laughs> Just because of him. So, yeah, it's... Uh, Shaping up to be a, a good game for them in that sense, obviously. But we'll see again. Yeah. We'll trick us love, and you know, I, and they went Arachno. But I don't even know if we really talked too much about that. But <laughs> the Arachno pickup. 
Mm, yeah, like the hero is really, really strong. Uh, but I think, obviously, like I said before, I think, I think this might be a try lane um, with maybe Empath, Swiftblade, and Revenant mm -hmm. uh, going in the long lane, I would assume. Uh, which, which is fine. If Arachna goes mid, it should be, you know, this is pretty expected. And then Benzatom goes suicide, and then the pre Magnus Engineer it's Torture about, yeah, goes short lane. Yeah. Uh, but we are underway, so we'll have to see what the lanes are like. That we are. He's back and good to go. Again, who's going to go where, Magnus? The hatchet on him. He's headed towards the middle lane, it looks like. Kind of just uh, making a point to go to the lanes right off the bat. Not a whole lot of, you know, running to the other side, warding up. Obviously, those junglers on either side, so not really too concerned about that. But um, Arachna is going to be heading bottom with Torture, it looks like, baby. So it's kind of a 2-2-1 two, two, setup here. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not too fond of this. I, I think it's pretty obvious that BMG are gonna like run an aggressive tri lane and like unless um, Shrek's lover are confident in just sort of rotating the engineer down bottom when the tri lane happens. I think it would have been a lot smarter if if um, Legion started with the tri lane bottom because if you don't if you sort of have to rotate lanes because of what the enemy does, like you're gonna be sort of you know, 30 or 20 seconds behind, and that obviously gives the advantage to your enemy. So I think it's best to sort of start with the lanes you want to start with, if that makes yeah. sense. Um, and so I think it would, if, like, if they are going to run, you know, the, uh, the Magnus or the Trilon bottom, they might as well just start with the heroes down there. Um, and if, if they are going to run the Trilon, I think Magnus would be a superior pick than the Arachna. Um, but, I mean, either way, like, going against the Swiftblade Trilon, I've said it before, like, this Trilon is almost it feels unbeatable like the the potential of a hero to go in and um like initiate with not be with no, yeah, no risk at all like he's completely fine obviously it's all magic damage at, at you know level one or level two level three um so swift Blade is the perfect hero like i don't think there's anything that beats it almost that's what it feels like to me anyway yeah um so yeah they might engage on this torture and, and the, the wall really does it too i mean when yeah, you have exactly. something blocking your path that's actually yeah oh torture <laughs> he almost got in some trouble there but He's going to be fine for now, but Arachna might need to... Okay, now she's fine too. I, actually, I'm like... The one thing actually, that if they do rotate or leave, you know, if Shrek leave the lanes that they are, they are going to shut down this Thunderbringer to an extent. I mean, Thunderbringer is, is, um, is good and all, but the one issue is how to lane her. Yeah. Um, so, like, if she gets shut down early, like, she could definitely face um, trouble, but Engine not the best box in support, though, is one yes! people I've got, actually, with how they're lining it already. Yeah, that, I mean, that is true. Obviously, a very big downside of Thunderbringer is that, well, if he doesn't have much mobility, I mean, so if you do catch him in a stun, you can definitely follow it up with a fairly easier kill. But, um, hey, he did get that buff, man. Oh, that's actually top or bottom lane, I should say. Rack? No, okay, going to be fine. Yeah, that wasn't really the best communication right there. I don't think Swiftblade was really ready for that wall to come out. And Torch actually landed a pretty good stun, too, so they're actually getting some good harassment out. The Legion side, even. Um, but it looks like Helper not going to get this lane control. And once uh, Legion lose lane control, they're going to be in so much trouble and so much danger. Like, a good wall coming out from Hanskin. Oh, there we go. Ooh, no. But, um, yeah, like, one wall like that can be the difference between, you know, dying and obviously surviving. So, yeah. It's going to be very dangerous. But, like, uh, one good thing about Thunderbringer, if she is dual lane, if she's dual lane mid, like, she couldn't get the CS with, with the chain lightning. And True. as I said before, Engineer not the strongest of laning support or zoning out support. So. But we won't have the, the baddest of times, um, so she should be all right. Yeah, and uh, I was kind of saying though, a little bit of a joke, but obviously can that now get you a speed boost with that W yeah. of you use it on you or yourself or your teammate. But also it does, you can use it on yourself now to gain vision, remember, too. So in a case like if it gets a Magnus has a steam bath, if you happen to be the only one around, you know, use it on yourself to get vision. I mean, it's, it's some practical use in the end. So it's... Uh, Definitely a buff change there, but yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, though, the chain lightning definitely keep you limp in this lane, if anything. I mean, he's 9-2 and two against the Magnus, who's only 4-1 and one here. <laughs> so. Oh, I didn't, I didn't actually check the stats, but yeah. yeah, like, I mean, like, you know, Thunderbringer's good enough to get CS, but I think this Magnus should definitely be doing better. Um, I, actually, I've oh, bottom lane. Yeah, they're, they're going for it again, but no, Torture, I think it's going to be fine. In fact, actually, Swiftly needs to be careful. There goes the web shot, the team reaction says, but Torture doesn't want to commit. He knows that he'd be in trouble, but Arachna does, unfortunately. That might be her death in the end. Yeah, the Defile comes out. Torture's like, I'm doing all that I can. He lands a chain reaction, but it was just too late. He gets walled. Down he goes. And that was so close to being good for Ogre, but it wasn't. BMG comes on the top, a double tap for Hanskin. 
Wow. Like, I mean, to be fair, like, Shrek is love. I didn't know right. Like, just with a dual lane against a tri lane, like, yeah. they're doing pretty decently. But, like, as you saw there, like, BMG just about almost outplaying him. Like, Fuji playing really well. They're going into the trees, making sure that Arachna couldn't get any more last hits. The Arachna had to overextend for that. And then, as a result, you know, the BMG sort of capitalized it. Um, so, well played coming out from, B, um, from BMG, actually. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, like, I. I I don't really understand like what the Shrek's love is doing. Like, yeah, okay, they're sending a trialing down here, but then why don't they just like send a, a support down there? We saw actually how close Swiftblade was dying. Like, if they had engineered down here, that would have definitely been a, a, a dead Swiftblade. So, I don't know why they're sort of just leaving or happy with just sending a dual lane against the Thunderbring, who's doing almost better than the Magnus anyway. But <laughs> doesn't make the strongest of like um, you know, sense to me. But and then maybe they're just scared to run the trialing. But if they're scared to run the trialing, I don't know why they didn't just send say the, the Benson down bottom just to sort of you know dodge the trialing. Entirely, but. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's almost like they they meet, you know, and this again, inexperience. Uh, you know, we're gonna talk about that up funny with a team like this. As Arachna does get caught out into the jungle, she's gonna try to dodge right here, do the juke of the century, but no, it's not gonna happen. They find her, and they eventually pick up the kill. My point was though, uh, in terms of the, uh, this is something we see with teams again. Though, they're, they're less experienced. They get committed. They, they make a point off the bat. They go for a lane setup. They're afraid to change. They feel like it's just too late right off the bat. We see these top tier teams, though. I know your BMG is sick in this case at this point. That oh, nice exchange right there, actually. <laughs> a double tap uh, coming out for Silka. But anyways, of their they want to make changes. They buy the TPs. They make the adjustments if need be uh, earlier right off the bat. So I feel like that's also maybe coming to consideration here. They, they might have realized, oh crap, we're going up against the trial lane. This isn't good. Ah, we're kind of stuck with it though. As Liv gets the kill. Oh. Middle lane, yeah, that's it, it's it's a lot of damage, man. It's this early on, especially. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying, but I mean, like, I know Zinc actually, like, is a particular team that actually focuses quite. Like, if, if a lane is unfavorable, they will definitely switch, swap up the lanes almost instantly. I know Zinc quite a you know a strong believer in, in that. And I think it definitely works. So uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot that this um, new team um, can definitely learn from, but like, not to you know, discourage them. I, mean, like, I remember when Rexars were you know, the, the new team on the block on Cycle 1, and like they came third in the end of, like, yeah. you know, end of Cycle 1. So uh, there's definitely like, good potential here. I think they just need to make sure, like, not be disheartened, and definitely um, you know, focus on improving. And, uh -oh. you know. Well, this could be a kill on Empath, actually. Kex down easily lands. Turret comes out. Empath He's now level 6, so he's not going to have the as well, but he does have the Essence Leg. It's draining plenty of life. In the meantime, Torture gets caught off to the side. They're going to come in on the hit. The Impalement's doing some return damage. He's going to stand his ground. Chin reactions. No, just a little bit too early. He knew that he was dying anyways. But here comes a Nightfall. Down goes Swiftlet in the end. The kicks and assisting as well. Engineer in trouble. There's the Thunderbringer ultimate coming into play. And he gets the one kill. And Thunderbringer's here himself as well. And guess what? The Legion team is falling like flies. Down they all go. Revenant stays alive. And Limp is here, baby. He comes in. Double yeah. tap. But I was just going to like... Oh, Torch is pretty in trouble as well. <laughs> they don't even care. Just going right in here. Level two torture. Yeah. Oh, he gets. He stuns. He uses on himself. All right. Gets the vision. And should be. Yeah. Um, I was. Yeah. I think actually what Benson did there is probably the right player. Like when a tri lane's going bad, it's the other solo lanes that really needs to sort of help in um, and you know make the difference in the tri lane. So well played coming out from Benson, but at the same time we saw Limp do exactly the same thing and you know. Time to bring an offering, maybe a little bit more than the Benson, and that's for result. Oh, Magnus might be in trouble here, actually. Here comes the dive game from BMG. This is another power yeah. of this, the Empath Swift Blade, especially. Yeah. Like, the Swift Blade just can go in knowing he's like not in trouble at all, but yeah, like well played coming out from the Benson, but obviously in the end, Thunderbringer comes in and does almost the same thing, but almost better because it's higher level and more impactful than this Benson early levels. All the while, we have like, um, we had Jonas Fam just farming up the top lane, getting further and further ahead uh, in this lane as well. But Jonas Fam is sort of the one hit person I wouldn't expect to be sort of staying on his lane actually <laughs> and farming, but you know, That's he's true. happy to be, yeah, get, get what he wants, I guess. Yeah, this team's doing his thing, and you know, he's, he's having an all right time at the top lane at the same time, so he's, uh, he's just fine being oh, oh, no, that is really true, though. He's, I mean, last season he had to beat uh, top five, I believe, at least in the. Kill to death because he was just so active, or at least kills per game. But this game, not uh, not a whole lot going on. Yeah, middle lane, Arachna. Uh oh, you are in trouble. That is that the Revenant Invis? No, that's the actual Invis from a rune right here. I mean, the Legion team's ready to respond. They got kind of some support, but uh oh, here comes Revenant from the side. There's a stun with Empath. 
And Arachne, he gets the, ma the, stone, or the magic card. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Thunderbringer's going to end up. No, he lives. No, he does fall. In the end, I was trying to say a hardened carapace. <laughs> That's magic what, what carp. magic carp he uses on him. That doesn't even make sense. That's that's Myrmidon. Um, that's he did something magical and it didn't work. We'll just leave yeah, that. the right is actually not a bad hero. Actually, like, obviously he increased the magic armor quite a bit, like eight yeah. at level one. Actually, it's pretty pretty decent spell, I guess, uh, against all this sort of burst damage. Actually, um, but yeah, like here comes the rotation coming out from bubbles and you know. Um, as a result, getting further and further ahead. Um, but I mean, this is probably what was to be expected. Like BMG, just like one of the most you know active and strongest teams in Honsen right now, and no surprise really. Uh oh, middle lane again. Magnus, he's gonna okay. He's able to destroy the stun right there with the the stun away himself. But in the end, no kills happening. Just the Roman Thunderbringer's level eight. Though. I just see that blast lightning. Oh. Gets chain react or the chain lightning. No, he cannot. In the meantime, actually, Empath does get caught to the side. Level 2 Torture, so not the most damage coming out. And actually, Revenant is also coming in. Here comes Engineer. It's numbers advantage in favor of the Legion team, but it's power advantage in favor of BMG right here. As the As-1 is used on a Thunderbringer right now, he is chasing. They do have Swift Blade in pursuit as well. So the Legion team, Shrek is love. They need to be spreading out here, running away, doing anything they can to get the hell on out of here. It's not going to happen, though. Down goes one, down goes two. Nightfall going to be used. I don't know about that, though. Sir Benton always does that way. They get the kill to Thunderbringer. Well, but at what cost right here? Magnus, okay. They have no vision, I guess. As, do they have any kind of AoE, though? Yes, they do. There's a Mortification. Oh, he stuns away. Maybe? Empath? Wall? Anything? Five seconds. He has his slink. Magnus, dead range! Okay, now he gets caught. <laughs> and BMG's continuing to just have fun with this. I think Hanskin's dead, though, at least. Maybe? Yeah, he's dead. You ain't making big plays here, Hanskin. <laughs> All right. Well, I get here. Finally. And here's Bubbles. Coming back in. <laughs> Finally got involved in some action. He wants more. Damn it! It's just not gonna stop. Here comes the point through. Down goes Arachna. It's been on top of Engineer after the side swift play though. He's taking some tower damage. He needs to get the hell out of there. Bubbles. He cannot go up that ledge. Unfortunately, that is not allowed unless you get us two. Yeah. I mean, at what one point to know though, like, <clears throat> like BMG, like. What I really sort of, this is more early game, but they rotate lanes really, really like a lot more often than the other top teams, and I think that's like something really to note here. Like for Shrekers Love, they were kind of almost like stagnant on their lanes. I know Benson did eventually come bottom in the end, but like by that time, you know, BMG or I think three or four kills are above them already. Um, and like when BMG see an opportunity to gank, they just do it. There's like no hesitance about it, they just do it because like they know. To get ahead, like they can easily just gank any lanes, and obviously the you know, the good players. So that when they execute a gank, it's gonna go almost flawlessly. So yeah. I think like you know, I think probably Shrek is loving me. Watch this free Oh my, that damage from Thunderbringer. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, I just you know, trying to help Shrek is love any way possible. Like just watch the replay and you know, point out any mistakes, you know, any laning, laning um, errors, whatever. And yeah. like. And definitely, like we said before, we're talking about um, with Brex as well, they weren't the strongest team coming into it, but in the end they ended up, you know, being a very, very strong team. So there's definitely a possibility to uh, get strong. I, I, yeah, to go for I mean, the draft I think really was pretty solid here for the Legion team, and that there's reasons for other heroes, especially that Arachna final pick. She's a good hero yeah. against the Soulborn team. It's just a matter of the laning was the biggest deal. And like I said, they got committed, they stuck with it, and in the end it's just now completely one-sided. Mm. As, uh, I mean, again, it is BMG, so I keep going back to that too. But, yeah. you know, learn from those mistakes. You should be making those adjustments. Yeah, definitely. Um, but, yeah, like, it's always hard to try and, you know, try and figure out a strategy against sort of the best teams in the world. Because, you, like, some teams are just so good. Like, is there a you know, strategy to beat them almost? But, um, yeah, like, just the don't get this on the right level. So, but, <laughs> Clearly, I mean, they don't even care about this tower here. This tower's been here, and they just keep diving past it. It's not mid wars. It's like, I don't even it's not even a mid wars. It's like a, in front of your base wars. Like, it's just like, just at a random spot that they keep somehow chaos. clashing at. Oh, boy. 26 hero kills already in 12 and a half minutes. What do they have last game? A lot, too, so. Yeah, they're, they're going to get off to a strong start here as far as padding those stats, especially. It can mean anything really in the end, but again, it's fun to, to keep track of. As Magnus, yeah, I mean, 
I just thought it's actually really, like, pretty cool, actually. I think they do, like, yeah, they're important, though, definitely. Oh, yeah, no, by the end of the season especially, I mean, they, they mean they mean something. I mean, it's, it's kind of good. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about for this season as well, uh, maybe also doing some kind of, a, getting, getting kind of an awards thing out, hmm. too, for, like, the top kills and just things like that. And yeah, that definitely. Like, so. uh, and it's, like, really useful, like, for, like, a captain and a drafter, though, to sort of see the stats, you know, like, overall, um, like, oh, this hero's doing well, you know, this hero is the strongest, or this hero works well with this hero. Like, it's really, really useful as a drafter, um, yeah. in my opinion, like, to... But I was, I was watching over the stats, and I was sort of surprised about a few of them, actually. And they're, like, it's really, really good work coming out from Quincy, though. Like, it's really, really helpful, like, I have to say. Yeah, he posts on the, the credit of forums, uh, you know, uh, yeah. when he has some, some good things to point out. So definitely, you know, look, look for those there. And again, I do my best to get that information out for you guys on these broadcasts. So, um, But yeah, this is another one of those 15-minute games, it looks like. So BMG obviously uh, looking to start very strong here in the... Card to count of our Pro League cycle number two. Uh, again, another thing to note here, by the way, about these six teams that are in this Pro League, these six teams are going to be in the Diamond Division coming up here for Hot Tour Season 3. So that was another big part of qualifying for the cycle number two, or, or for, for the second cycle even, of the Card to count of our Pro League. So that's something to look forward to as well for all these teams, including, you know, these lesser experienced teams. And again, just a lot of opportunities now to start gaining that experience learning from your past times but uh the, with that said as well this is the only match that has been planned for today um again i'll, I'll go into a little bit more of that stuff though after the match is actually finished right here because there's still action baby there's still action bubbles kind of going yellow here the same area they, they don't care about the tower they just keep diving past it so it's many kills there. 30 hero kills. It's going to be two kills, two kills per minute is going to be the average here. <laughs> but um, I, I'm, I'm, like, I hope we get to see like the heroes like Raven and kind of being, being sort of used in the other sort of games as well, because I think there's definitely room for it. Um, but I did like to see BMG at least experiment with these kind of heroes, because I, I think they definitely have place in the competitive scene. I think people are just maybe scared to you know, play them or for, for whatever reason, but I think there's definitely room for them. Um, and I mean, I think I definitely, you know, there's, I think it's a possibility for them to actually work and be a reason why they've been picked yeah. up. You know, some people like pick up, oh, let's just appear just you know, because of it. I well, think there's definitely a potential. Redmond also seems like a very solid boxing out support choice. I mean, you got your top box, likes like a torture or whatever. He seems like he has that potential to do very well in that sense, like a babysit. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with you, especially on Revan. I mean, Thunderbringer, I can honestly kind of see, you know, granted, yeah, it's a trial lane matchup. Sure, there is still a beat for it, but it's just the problem with like you know um, the laning situation and like when you have a hero that's kind of off the wall, it can either go really well or really bad, and, and most teams are, you know don't want to take the risk, especially exactly. if it's like an important game, etc. So it's understandable, but yeah. I definitely think there's definitely a possibility, um, particularly with Revan. I don't know like whether how it works as support. I mean, I don't think it's the strongest hero in a tri lane because he doesn't have that so um, reliable stun, yeah. uh, and the the damage isn't burst. Like the problem with like heroes like Revenant, like if you don't offer burst, like in the, in the laning phase, it's not the strongest of supports because it's it's the heroes that offer burst or you know the important heroes because it's you know, kill a hero instantly is a lot more important than killing it over time, obviously. So, um, but I definitely like to see him uh, in the future though. So we'll have yeah, to see. Yeah, it reminds me of that kind of that stay grid effect. I mean, you know, when they were on top for the longest time, they they keep her tempest. I mean, they just yep. push drastic grid. They they did it. People kept on saying, like, oh, they play the same. It's working. I mean, why yeah. why would they change exactly. it if it's working every yep. single game? Yep. What's the point? I mean, especially when there's good money on the line and you know everything else. So. Uh, you, you can't pull, you can't fault the teams for that, but you know as time went on, you know BMG started becoming more of a contender, and then that forced adjustments to be made at a stage oh, yeah, green definitely. and like the, the devour pick coming up from BMG, like things like that, or yeah. lines whatever back in the day with beating teams like Stay Green and Stay Green obviously had to rectify or sort of change their strategy as a result. So it's good to see like you know heroes or the meta changing because of a reason, not just you know because of whatever reason, you know no reason almost. So. Yeah, it's good to see. All right, all right. With that said, again, though, that is going to do it for a game or for the series even. For